Dal, what, what impresses you about Jacksonville State defense? What do they do best? Yes, sir. Um, they are very multiple in scheme, as multiple as anyone we've played to this point. Uh, they've got every defense. It's a Rolodex defense. And, you know, they, they play really hard. There's, they definitely have an edge to them. And you put that you put the edge on top of being able to do as much as they do defensively. You know, that's why the record is what it is. Looking back to Saturday and, and this past Saturday and, and I guess the intentional grounding penalties were the main <laughs> talking point for folks. What's your take on, on what happened there in, in those three plays? Yeah, I think that um, sometimes you worry about the symptom, and not the problem. Um, obviously that uh, we've we've had an issue here with protection. We've had an issue here with sacks. Um, number seven's trying not to take sacks, especially on first and second down. Um, the first one, um, we had a, two tight ends blocking the 5'11", 190-pound nickel and got run through. And it's at Spencer's feet. And we had a double go uh, concept where Leggett runs by the guy and the guy's trying to tackle him as he runs by him. And, uh, have a chance for a big play, and Spencer's not expecting those people at his feet. And if I, and the coaching point to him is, hey, when you feel that right there, throw the ball away um, down the field, pass Leggett. But we've we've been on his butt. Hey, don't take sacks on first and second down. Um, so that was the first one. The second one, um, we didn't block the nickel uh, coming off the edge. We're supposed to sort out there and block the nickel. So we had an unblocked hitter. So when he spins right to throw the ball away, um, Luke Doty's running the end cut away, and there's no one, um, you know, he's running away from an unblocked hitter that should be taken care of and protects, it should be accounted for. So as he spins and goes away, he throws it away, which is a smart play, but it's like, hey, I know we didn't take care of that guy, but we need you to get outside the pocket before you throw the ball away. And then uh, the third one was a quick game protection where we got beat quickly at the line of scrimmage with three end breakers. And um, so, and he's going to have knocks open uh, coming as uh, option three, and he's trying to get rid of the ball. And you know, it's it's on everyone. It's making sure that we're not shocked at quarterback when things happen. It's it's coaching. Uh, it's talking about those things in meetings. Um, it's being cleaner in protection. We need to be much cleaner in protection. Uh, we can't let unblocked guys, um, and we need to be able to pass games and do those things. But that's those were. That's why those things happen. I guess what was kind of your overall assessment of Nick Harbor Saturday, especially the way he kind of had that drop early and yeah. responded from a few of those? And, that, and that's, you know, you come out and you drop the ball, and he cares deeply. And he's like, he, he's told everyone in the building, thank you for how much he's playing. He, whether it's myself or Coach Beamer or Justin, the wide receiver coach, um, you know, it, but the thing that you love about him is he drops the ball. It's, you know, it's the third play of the game, it's the first third down. And he was down on the sideline, but you see the people rally around him because they see how much how much work he puts into this thing. Um, you know, he catches balls after practice on Thursdays, Fridays. He's you know he's the last guy to get on the bus because Coach Day and myself are throwing him balls in the indoor and same thing on Thursday and extra jugs and um, you know it's easy to rally around a kid and pull for a kid like that because how hard he works. So then to have the mental uh, fortitude and grit to go back out there and compete in the way he did because he felt like he let down the team. He's not sad because he dropped the ball for his individual um, accomplishments. He's sad because he feels like he let the team down, and that's how the kid's wired. But to come back and compete the way he did, and, and then the next two third downs makes a really good catch going uh, away from him with a guy hanging on him. Um, you know, his best football is ahead of him. He's getting better and better. Um, that was a big step for him because it was, you know, we've talked about this a million times about Nick Harbor, but you don't want to put a kid out there too early before he's ready. And sometimes he's, they're not ready mentally to handle the adversity and prosperity that comes with playing football at this high of a level. So, and you see his growth right there. You guys may not see it, the fans may not see it, but we see the growth of be able to be down and be um, not happy with your circumstances or event that uh, took place to to come back and have the grit to compete and continue to play in it versus a really good SEC opponent. Yeah, I know we've we've talked about Mario Anderson over the last yeah. couple of weeks, but outside of just running, it seems like he's really continued to grow when it comes from a pass protection standpoint and just other elements. What are some of those other things that maybe from the naked eye or from the outside people aren't seeing as much that you guys are seeing every day? Yeah, I think that's a great question. I think the kids learned how to play without the ball. 
um, which, you know, you get, in, you get into these situations. It's not just about carrying the football, which he's done a great job with, and he's become a more physical downhill runner. You can see his confidence. Guys that break tackles know where to put their eyes. They're confident in their ability to, to run through arm tackles. And since the bye week, he has greatly improved. Um, getting to the point from the start of the season to the bye, he's greatly improved. Um, and most times success builds confidence. And success, confidence is only built from demonstrated ability. Well, now he's actually putting it on tape and doing it. But it's the thing, it's, he's really good with chips. He does a great job. He understands what, where protection, where when we call chips and butches and nudges, where, like how to fit the tackles and how to, and he does a great job communicating with the tackle. Um, hey, I'm here, I'm here. Or sometimes when you call chips, like, um, you have, you still have to check your protection before you can go help the tackle. It's not just, hey, we're going to go chip. Well, sometimes they do certain things to take you off chips, um, and that's where he's grown. He has – like it's eye discipline. He has clean eyes now, and he understands he – his mind is clean now. There's not clutter. He can process those things of like, hey, I have my protection responsibilities to now get out to chip to help and get out in the passing game. And that's where he's he's won our confidence. He, that's, he wasn't playing that way in August and September, and now he is. And he will continue to play that way because he continues to be professional and continu continues to do things the right way. And now the process is he's a really physical guy. He plays hard. Now it's he has to become a pro and taking care of his body because he's getting hit a lot. And um, you know he's he's become kind of the workhorse running back for us. And so now there's a second, there's another level of hey, you, all right, you can carry the ball, you play well without the ball, but now become the all-around player and continue to take care of your body as well. How about just the number of offensive line combinations you guys have had with shifting guys from guard to tackle to yeah. center and all of that? I mean, what is the challenge of moving into different positions on the line, you know, like Ja'Kai had to do on yeah. Saturday? Yeah, well, even from right to left, like, the, the you're set. You're in a different stance. Like, your football is a game about fundamentals. And all of a sudden, when you're not comfortable, you are you get comfortable playing at right tackle and you get comfortable playing at right guard. Well, now you go to the left side and you have to flip your stance. And it doesn't seem like that big of a deal until you have to actually do it. And it is hard. It's not. It's not easy to say, "Hey, I'm gonna go be a go play right guard, right tackle, be in a right-handed stance." Um, I have a three-point stance and I have a two-point stance uh, based on the situation, the game, and all of a sudden now you got to do it from the left, and now you got to play with a different tackle, and now you you've got to get uh, or a different guard. Now you got to get different fits with those guys. So, um, you know, it's a it's a huge challenge, and it's a huge challenge for each individual player, and then it becomes a huge challenge of playing together. So there's a lot of things that go that go in that goes into that, and it's it's not simple and it's not easy, and it takes time and um, you know, and, and unfortunately playing f college, major college football, like you're in a race against time all the time. You know, there's only so much practice time. There's only so many hours that so many reps that you get in. So um, then I don't think one of those kids has made an excuse all year and you're not going to get it from us and you're not going to get it from our kids. They understand the responsibility they have. We have the, we understand the responsibility we have as coaches. We're not doing a good enough job um, with that stuff, but uh, our kids are competing. They're very unselfish um, to do that. It would be really easy to say that's putting me in a position to not be completely successful. And a lot of these kids worry about that. And these guys have not. Like These guys have shifted around. They've moved around. Um, they take ownership when they need to take ownership. Uh, and it's a, it's a – those guys aren't talked about enough for their unselfishness and they're willing to do what's best for the team when it's not always what's best for them as an individual. Hey, Dal, with Nick Harbour, is there anyone in, from your time working in the NFL that he kind of reminds you of? And then, you know, with uh, with his work ethic and stuff, how far do you think he can go with the way he works, you know, in practice and stuff? Yeah, I think it's like for Leggett, like the guys I've scouted, like DJ Metcalf reminds me of him. And, and Nick is so unusual from an aspect of um, – you know, he's a track guy that's um, learned how to play football and he's getting better every week and he's big and he's fast. And there's not there's not very many humans on the face of the earth that are his size with his speed. Um, and then you and there's not many kids that have his type of humbleness as well. So from that span, I, I think he's very unique. Um, and so it's hard for me to say, like, hey, he reminds me. I had Moss in Tennessee for a little while. Um, who was a big – but they're different type movers. Like Moss was a very easy mover uh, with elite um, ball skills and be, ability to play above the rim. Alshon was that way. He was an easy mover that uh, had elite ball skills. This kid is a build-to-speed, long-striding, powerful um, powerful kid that's, um, that's strong. He's just built differently than most people that you come across. I think that's why everyone's so intrigued with him. I think that's why we get so many questions about him because – 
And I remember going out in pregame warm up and uh, drink uh, Eli Drinkwitz comes up. He's like, golly, look, that guy's impressive looking. Um, he's just built different. He looks different. He moves different. Um, he's got a lot of work to do as a wide receiver, but like a comparison, it's a very u- unique comparison. So I would, I don't have one guy. I'm like, hey, he really reminds me of him because his, his background and size, highway speed is so unique. The offensive line with when you're playing as many true freshmen, redshirt freshmen, young guys. Is there part of you, I mean, is there a mix of this is going to be great because they're getting all this experience and then a mix of like, okay, could this maybe hurt them because um, if their confidence isn't all the way, is there a mix or is it all good? I think it's a good question. Um, I'm normally in these situations, I hate having a bad practice worse than I hate losses. Like I'm miserable after practice. The coaches don't want to be around me after a bad practice. Um, So that stuff, and it's hard to get – we're not where we need to be there. We're not. And it has nothing – it's – I'm not going to talk about the things that we all can talk about and all the excuses that are there if you want to use them. And I don't, and we shouldn't. Um, I don't think that way. I think it's a really good question. I understand the question. But when you get the right type kids, you don't worry about it. And we have the right type kids. That's what we have. Um, they're going to benefit from it long term. Like, the struggle is hard. It's really freaking hard to go through that, like, that type stuff. And sometimes as a coach, it's not about you as much as it is. Like, you see these guys that work their butts off and do things the right way, and it just hasn't happened yet for them. I do. I watched Nick Harbour go through it from the di- the minute he got here till now, and all of a sudden it's like, wow, he's better. And I'm sure everyone outside the world is like, well, he should have been doing this the whole time. Well, it's not that easy. It's like Mario. Like, why has why wasn't he playing earlier? He wasn't ready. He wasn't ready. But – it's a those kids have they work their butts off and they stay focused on the on the, the vision they have. You live in vision or circumstance, so yeah, well, I can sit here and say, hey, we're gonna be great, we're gonna be so much better next year because like all the experience they've gotten. But we got four games left now versus four really good opponents, and this opponent we're gonna play is really good, and so we're we're in a racing as time to get these guys ready to play this week. And they, you benefit from all, all experiences. And there's only one way to get experience, and that's to go do it. And sometimes you have to learn from failure. And sometimes if you're the right type kids, which we have, and you have the right type people, you grow from those things. And those things, you get forged in the fire, and they, you, they make you who you are. And right now we're going through some struggles up front. But it has, it, our kids are made to be in this, and they're going to benefit from it, and they're going through it the right way, and they're about the team. Hey, Dell, this is kind of an X's and O's question I want to understand a little bit better. You guys have had some success on sh- on short, tight passes during yes, the year. What What's the difference between like a slant and a shallow cross or an in cut? And, and when is one used as opposed to the other? So a lot, most times it comes with, uh, it's a very uh, unique question. Uh, that's easier question to answer than like some of these other ones that y'all ask. Um, it kind of put me in a better mood because I was in a really bad mood. But now, um, so slants most of the time happen from outside. And it's the outside guys. Like you'll have uh, lion concepts with double slant concepts where the inside guy runs a slant. But most of the time, like, and they're good versus teams that play a lot of man. And they're, they're runaways. You want people on the move versus man coverage. You don't want to sit. Um, most of the time, shallow cross has become – um, they're to hold a linebacker down, to nail down, to throw over the top of someone. Um, sometimes you want to just get that guy started to clear out a slant coming behind him. Um, so it's where they're at in the pattern is, is a – and most times slots and, you know, um, slots and inside receivers run those things. Now, with the uh, 75-yarder the Leggett had, it was a drive concept, and drive is like a shallow basic, like Bill Walsh. Z drive like um, and you have a chance to get your guys on the move and run away from people versus man coverage so that so it's it's where it's used in the concept and it's the goal of the passing game is to get the number one receiver open in the timing of the play and a lot of times you put shallow crosses to you know to get linebackers to set so they to get the second level of the defense linebackers to sit down so you can throw something behind them and that that's where they're different. Appreciate you guys. Thank you.